It was a sunny afternoon in October, last of the autumn days for working in the yard. Tracy Lindley was on the riding mower. Her husband Chuck was in the house. And Mason, their three-year-old son, curious and daring as always, found his way outside to the porch, to the steps, to the lawn, to mom. In her concentration, in the deafening roar of the engine, Tracy Lindley did not sense her son's presence until she felt herself back over him. By then, Mason was under the blade. Chuck instantly dialed 911. An EMS team was called to the scene, and the Duke emergency helicopter was dispatched. From Burlington, Mason Lindley was flown to Duke Children's Hospital in Durham. It's a ride mower, it's a hydrostatic mower, so I'd driven it twice before. The kids were in the garage, Chuck was there, and I went down the left-hand side of the house. There is a tree that's very close to the fence, and I just passed that tree and there's woods right in front of me with logs and everything. So I made a left-hand turn and went to back up and it kind of bumped into something but I thought it was one of those logs right by the woods, and so I backed up again and felt the big bump and heard, heard grinding noises. And I looked down and there was Mason's face out from under the blades of the mower. And my first initial thought was, this is a nightmare. I must have passed out somewhere. This is a nightmare. When Mason came into the hospital, I got a call at my desk saying that there was a little boy in an accident and this was a sight they couldn't believe, and you better come downstairs right now. And I went downstairs, and I saw Mason lying on the bed, and he looked wonderful, except that there was a big chunk of his body missing. And we said, we have to take him upstairs right now and fix things, and we just brought him right upstairs to the operating room. As much as we could see the organs of his body, and everything was missing. His spleen was bleeding, we took it out, and half his stomach was bleeding, and we sort of sewed that up. And half his pancreas was bleeding, and we took that out. And the bottom part of his lung was gone, and we fixed that up. And then we looked at his intestine and his colon, and then we stopped, and we realized that it was gone. And at that point, we wondered, why didn't he bleed to death? What kept him alive till now? Dr. Rice called me. Uh, almost immediately after he saved uh, Mason's life and said now we have to work on preserving his life and the only way we're going to do that is to get his chest cavity and his abdominal cavity closed and in, in Mason's case we took uh, skin and muscle from his back and brought that around to cover the gaping hole. Right now I'm happy to say Mason's uh, pretty complete, uh, he's pretty together quote unquote and uh, he'll come back to fight another day. Uh, Mason's future prognosis is that he will be on intravenous feeding support, um, essentially indefinitely. And we expect that future to be pretty good because um, that is a pretty good technology. And his secondary option is to have an intestinal transplant at some point uh, down the line, um, preferably when the technology is better and the success rate of that process is markedly improved. The fact that Mason is here today in his good condition and with all of the positives that have gone on um, speaks volumes to a whole set of circumstances that came together at the right time for the right little guy. Mason is definitely a miracle. You know, every little step was a miracle. I mean, because according to what the doctors tell us, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. We still have a long road ahead, but with God, we can make it easier. I think the faith allows you to um, kind of not forget things from the past and not, not forget what's happened, but allows you to put blinders on what's behind you so that you can focus on what's in front of you. My hope for Mason's future is, first of all, that maybe someday 
if it ever crosses his mind, that he could forgive me. And maybe by that time I will have forgiven myself. What can we learn from the three-year-old? Is there some great revelation to be found in an event so traumatic that it makes us turn away? How could this happen? These are difficult questions. But if you look beyond the anguish of October, you will find a level of courage and faith and medicine that asks us to stand up and take notice. And suddenly, the answers to all your questions will be there, right in front of you, in the form of a miraculous little boy, alive and playing as if nothing at all had happened. A little boy named Mason Lindley, our truest of champions.